there are many stallions at start who didn't manage to win a Group 1, but we tend to forget just how good the ones were who managed to climb racing's highest pinnacle. Flying Artie was named the world champion three-year-old after his win in the Coolmore Stud Stakes, and now he's been backed by Paul Whelan and Luskin Park and a number of other very good breeders with his first foals already looking the goods. It's so fantastic. We've seen Flying Artie today, of course, at Newgate Farm, but seeing some of his foals, it's a, it's a tough time, isn't it, a few years into their, their breeding career for these stallions, but he really is a standout. There's no doubt about it, but, uh, Caroline, uh, people tend to forget, and they forget just how good horses are. He's uh, the world champion sprinter. At the same time, Chautauqua was the senior so he's, he's up there with the, the best in the world. He won the Coolmore, he's second in the Blue Diamond, was very unlucky. Uh, won the Catanac Jewelry, uh, third in the Golden Slipper. Uh, all those sort of things slipped the mind. But he's now gone on and he's entered a, a new era. And uh, his fertility is as high as 90%. Uh, so he's doing the job, 180 mares in his first year, of which 83 of them were state performers so, or, 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 or providers of stakes winners. Well, it's quite incredible when you look at um, you know, the amount of stallions retiring to stud that, you know, there are a lot that didn't win Group 1s. And when they are the one that won the Group 1, I mean, I'm, I Am Invincible has been great, but there's only one. I mean, there won't be that many others that will be top, top stallions that didn't win a Group 1. It is really the benchmark, isn't it? Well, at the moment, there's, there's, as a result of, unfortunately, the, the deaths of so many good stallions, there is going to have to be one of those stallions that's going to come out of the ruck. And I, my personal view is it's going to be Artie, because from the foals I have here, the age between 8 and 12, uh, 10 months, they look fantastic. They've got great bone, great muscle, look like him, image of him, and particularly their attitude is like him. He was a cool dude, and so are they. Star turn tackled by Flying Artie. That sideline, the Saddler's Well, sideline's Real Prado, Artie Schiller. You know, it is one of the best in the world. We know Saddler's Wells, but it's a great chance for people with mares with that Danehill blood, isn't it? There's no doubt about it at all, and it's reinforced by John Warren, the Queen's buyer, who said the other day that the Danehill blood mixed with that of Saddler's Wells is good in England. It's fantastic in England. And he said it's, uh, it's just going to go on. He pulls all stops out, flying Artie, and he's too strong. And the other thing, of course, is the Rubiton blood, the Damsar Rubiton. We know what a fabulous colonial influence he's been, a Cox Plate winner, and he appears in so many pedigrees of Group 1 winners. And, and, we'll, and we'll continue and, and throw through to his, to his progeny after, too. Uh, he's a sire that uh, will definitely continue to breed Group 1 horses. Of course, Rubiton has made his mark already. Flying Artie is a perfect example. And he's going to have more Group 1s. And he's going to have more Red Zeals. There's no doubt about that. Looking to conquer the Everest again, and boy, he's done it. Red Zeal. And as you say, looking at Flying Artie now, there's a quality about him too. I mean, we filmed him again now in the paddock. He's sort of, you know, he's not, not a hugely bulked up horse. He's a very versatile looking horse who, of course, won the Cornwall start, as you said, a Group 1 three-year-old sprint. But he also has, you know, a little bit of length about him. He's a lovely physical type. And, and frankly, that's the reason I bought him, because I, he had that length, he had that stride, uh, he had that walk. Uh, it was just an amazing thing for me to see, uh, but no one else saw it. And I, I was happy to, even though I took to take my mind to, to three days to make up my <laughs> mind whether I'd go and buy a colt, yep. uh, I, I sat here at home three days after wondering why I shouldn't buy it. So I just rang up Jonathan Darcy and said, uh, is that horse for sale? He said, yes. And I was cheeky enough to ask for 45, not 50, but they <laughs> said they wanted 50, and uh, so be it. It was in Melbourne, set it to meet price, and the rest is history.
Well, we saw a couple of horses over at Newgate, of course, as I said, where he stands. So this was a colt out of uh, Fleur de Heer. A half to Zam Zam, who was a stakes winner and third in a blue diamond. It is the, the Tully Thunder Lavendi family. So, you know, it's really interesting seeing also Cinnamon Dove, the Dam of Dark Eyes, had a lovely flying arty filly. And they really are standouts, you know, and according to the guys there at Newgate, some of the best foals on the farm. Well, they definitely are. And, and what people should be aware of is that they're improving. The older they get, the better they get. And as they grow older and are looked after, then they'll go on and be successful as I think they will. And then here at Luskin Park, we've looked at, well, of course, close to your heart, and of course, Will Mueller's as well, Kentucky Miss, the colt from Kentucky yeah. Miss. Lovely, strong foal. Of course, you know, she's by Fox Wedge. And, you know, just, you know, as you say, typical of the type that he's throwing. Well, she's a, she's a natural. A two, run two races a two-year-old, including the Cap Dantes VRC. Uh, she's a natural. No one thought he would be a two-year-old, where he had a, a stellar career as a two-year-old, second in the Blue Diamond. And, and he ran second beating a whisker in the Maribyrnong Trial Plate. And that was in, 20, you know, in October. Mm -hmm. So uh, he's, he, he's likely to throw two-year-olds too. And we looked at also 12-pack Shelley Colt, a really strong back end. That's something I was impressed at too. And that deep girth too, you know, there's plenty of engine room in there too and power behind. I think you'd have to agree with me that most of them have got the same characteristics. Uh, strength is like Artie. they all got that strength of the sire. Had another family you're so involved in, and she's a wildcat, of course, assisted yeah. a fox wedge, your own fox wedge, and, um, you know, again, that lovely hind leg too, which is really a big part of making a lovely horse that can get that power from behind. Well, they're, they're destined to be successful, any of those daughters of, of fox wedge. It's already been proven that he's a sire of females, of, of, of fillies, uh, and like I've said before about uh, Rubiton, uh, he'll go on and his fillies will become great broodmares. And then finally the Sabrika filly, just a fabulous walk, you know, when she, it, yeah. look, it was a windy day, it was hard for these babies yeah. here today, but a really good bodied filly too, and the dam was trained by David Hayes and won a couple as a two-year-old that injured herself, but when she went out in the paddock too, she had the most beautiful, bouncy, springy athleticism. And balance. Yes. And balance and strength, and that's the arty. Balance and strength was a, the hallmark of his ability. Uh, when Bowman got, got on him in the last 400 at the Coolmore, he ran 21.5 and he was balanced. And that's why he won by a length and a quarter. So overall, these foals, you know, I guess you're seeing them around everywhere and you have a number of your own too, but it looks as if some really good breeders have been backing Flying Artie. Well, I, I would hope so and I hope they continue to do so because in his third year, he's, he's had stellar two years of books, and if he has a, a stellar number in year three, then he's certainly going to make it.